Hey YouTube, it's the Test Lead, and today we're taking a deep dive into K6, the performance testing tool. If you're new to my channel, feel free to subscribe. I make content to help you on your QA manual as well as automation journey. Now back to the video. Grafana K6, or simply known as K6, is a load testing tool for performance testing. K6 is open source, meaning it's free to download and use right away and helps you test the performance and reliability of your application or system. It also helps you test the scalability of your application. K6 was built with performance in mind. So by default, it does not launch any browsers during this test because that takes extra resources from your machine. If you do, however, want to use a browser, you can use the XK6 browser. The tests for K6 are written in JavaScript. If you're new to programming, that's a very easy language to learn. If you know any other programming languages already, it'll be easy to pick up. K6 also has two versions, the free open source version, which we'll mostly cover today, as well as a cloud version, which has some paid tiers. Now let's talk about the features most used for K6. The key features of K6 include its CLI, which is command line interface tool that has developer friendly APIs. It's scripting in JavaScript and for automation friendly load testing, checks, thresholds, and durations. The metrics and recording features are also very important. So if you're used to using any automation tools, checks are like Boolean validations, they're equivalent. And thresholds are the overall pass fill criteria for your test. As long as the performance of your system meets conditions of the set threshold, then the test will finish with a pass status. Now let's dive into some example checks. This first check here checks the HTTP response code is a 200. This next one checks the response body. Now let's see some example thresholds. This tests if less than 1% of the request return an error. This next one validates if 90% of requests have a response time below 400 milliseconds. Now duration. Duration is how long you want to send the request for. In our example, we're sending for one minute, 2,000 calls, nine minutes, 2,000 calls, three minutes, 10,000 calls, for seven minutes, 10,000 calls, and then for 10 minutes, zero calls. So now we have all of our setup stuff defined. Let's talk about our results. Metrics. By default, K6 has some built-in metrics, but you can also make custom metrics. Whether it's built-in or custom metrics, they fall into these four types. Counter, a metric that sums up added values. Engage, a metric that stores the min, max, and last values added to it. Rate, a metric that tracks the percentage of added values that are non-zero. And trend, a metric that allows for calculating statistics on the added values. And now look at this example of metrics. So now you have all these beautiful metrics. Let's talk about possibly exporting the results. Maybe you don't like how the metrics look by default. You can route the box export it to a CSV or JSON file or stream to one of the following services. And last but not least, let's say you're not good with any programming language. You can use the recorder tool. A test can be recorded to model the logic of your test for Chrome and Firefox. You can also record just the HTTP request using the HAR converter. Now let's go over some of the use cases for K6. K6 is usually used by developers, automation engineers, and QA engineers to test the reliability and performance of APIs, microservices, and websites. For load testing, K6 tries to use minimal resources for running load tests such as spoke, stress, and soak tests. For performance testing, you can feed a load continuously and validate the performance and availability of an environment. And for browser testing, you can run a browser-based performance test, which can only be caught via the browser. On their website, they have a bunch of links to help you get started, as well as the installation. I'll make a future video going to writing your first test with K6. If you found this video helpful at all, please like, share, and subscribe. If you have suggestions for future videos, please leave them below. If you want help on your QA journey, check out my new book, 
QA must know vocabulary. And most importantly, don't forget to learn something new today.